Hi everyone, I'm George. This is my budget friendly aquascape at home. I'm gonna take you through an update, what I do on a week by week maintenance basis. and just give you a general overview of how it's progressed over the last month or so. So if you're new to my channel and you're interested in aquascaping, planted tanks and inspirational aquariums, then do subscribe, hit that notification bell and you'll never miss a thing. So let's just talk a little bit about the aquascape itself right now. It has been about two weeks since I've last done a water change. So you can see there's considerable algae building up on the rocks there. I've actually got minor black beard or black brush algae building up on the wood. Plenty of algae on the glass. This is all okay, this is kind of understandable and this is what I'd expect. There's virtually no algae on the plants which is a really good sign, it means the plants are growing really healthily. Algae is most common in, uh, in plants that are suffering. The Monte Carlo here is suffering a bit, it's not really taking very well although there is new growth so I'm just going to leave that be and see how it goes. Okay, let's go through the maintenance. I have done a video on the quick maintenance process before, but I'll just go through it again for those that haven't seen it. Unplug the heater and the filter. Remove some of the water so I can maintain the tank without spilling water out of the top. What I like to do is just wave my hand gently above the soil. That's gonna lift up any organic waste, which you can siphon out as part of your water change. Okay, that's enough water for now. Okay, now it's a case of cleaning the glass and the filter side. So I've got a Denelay clean eight or here, like a wire wool on one side and a soft sponge on the other. So ideally you want to be doing this every week. I've been away a lot from home lately, so I've been a little bit lazy and let it slip. So the algae has built up a little bit more than I'd like, but it's nothing that can't be remedied. And it's really important that you, you do your frequent maintenance, you know, make it a weekly task if not if not more often, depending on the system you've got. Get in the habit of doing it, prepare yourself mentally to do it, and then it doesn't become as much of a chore. With my style of keeping aquascapes, it's really important to keep it as clean as possible. Limit waste organics by doing your, your weekly water changes. Keep your algae down by scrubbing the glass and your equipment if necessary. If you've got any really bad algae on your plants, then just trim that plant back. I've done quite a few videos now on maintaining my tanks, so do check them out. Hopefully you'll learn something new with every video. I do repeat a lot of, my, a lot of the, the principles over and over, but I don't think there's any harm in that sometimes, you know, just try to get that message across. So probably the biggest tip with maintenance is the last thing you do in the maintenance practice should be water change. If you think about it, I'm cleaning off all this algae from the glass, now that's in the water. Now, unless I do dilute that algae now with a water change, it's just going to stay in there and potentially it's going to transfer to other parts of the tank, maybe get on the leaves. You really need to follow up any tank maintenance with a water change. So if this is your first time on the, what, seeing this tank, do check out my previous videos on it. You'll see how I created the aquascape and then you'll see an update on it and you should see that it's developed quite nicely. It's really important to clean near the substrate line. Algae tends to build up here. So I just use a toothbrush. That's the glass pretty much done, happy with that. Okay, now it's time to clean our rocks. Again, using the toothbrush here. Mm -hmm. So for really stubborn algae, you can use a wire brush, which is really quite aggressive on the stone. But sometimes, you know, for really stubborn green algae or red algae, like BBA, black beard algae, sometimes you need the wire brush. You don't have to get the rocks immaculately clean. A little bit of an algae coating on there looks natural in my opinion. You know, and actually a little bit of algae in the in the tank is a natural thing it's it's just when it becomes an eyesore you know when it starts to take over the plants that's my biggest indicator when you start getting algae on the plants that's when you start when you need to worry because it means you're, you're not looking after your plants as well as you should be and algae is all about prevention and the best way to prevent algae is to really focus on decent plant growth. If you can see that amano shrimp there is absolutely massive. I kept about, I had about 50 amano shrimp in the discus tank once, and I was a bit worried that the, the, the discus would eat them. But do you know what? The amano shrimp were actually almost out competing the discus for food. They absolutely loved the beef heart, and consequently, because beef heart's so high in protein, the, um, <laughs> they grew super quick. Really, really fast growing shrimp, and they became absolutely massive in the space of about three months. So um, there's a top tip for you. If you want to grow your Romano shrimp really big, feed them beef heart. Okay, we have got a light covering of BBA on the wood. I'm not going to attack that right now. Hopefully it will die back on its own accord. If it gets much worse, then I'll address that in another video. You can see the water's really cloudy now. That's from releasing all this algae into the water column. 
and obviously again like i said earlier the last thing we need to do is that big water change and i'm also going to clean the filter today i've not cleaned it since i set the tank up so Rex Harlow green is looking amazing look at that it's really really healthy i'm really happy and look the, the, the wiggy air staying really red as well so that's really cool uh, i've got some buca volandra here which i took out of my aquascaper 1200 just as an experiment just pop that in there okay now it's time for our water change I'm going to siphon quite a lot of water out today, probably do bigger than the 50% because it is quite, quite bad with the algae. So being careful not to suck any livestock up, although you can use the opportunity, like I said earlier, to siphon any pest snails. So again, just give your hand a bit of a wave and you can see all that stuff getting lifted up. We can siphon that away. This is organic waste, which serves no purpose in the aquarium. It only serves to feed algae, so really important to get rid of this if you can. Okay, next I'm going to remove the internal filter. And then it's just a case of rinsing the, uh, the sponge in old tank water to maintain the filter bacteria. Okay, let's clean the filter, really easy. It just comes off there. You've got the impeller inside there, which we can clean. Just take the sponge out. This is it, this is the, all of the filtration media that I use in here. Just a sponge. It's a low fish stocking, so the plants do a lot of the biological filtration as well. So the, the filter is more for circulation purposes and flow, mechanical filtration obviously, and then finally a little bit of the biological filtration. Okay, time to clean the impeller. You can just clean the housing outside there with a toothbrush. Take that off and then we have the impeller underneath. Take that off really easily with some tweezers. Put that in the water and then we can clean the impeller with our toothbrush again. And it's important to keep your impeller fairly clean because over time it can, it can get blocked. It's obviously gonna damage your filter bacteria and cause some issues in your aquarium. So I like to clean my filter probably once a month or so. Let's give this a bit of a clean as well. Pop the impeller back in. And pop the housing back on, pop our filter sponge in there, reattach our head to the casing, there we go, and then we can pop that back in the aquarium. Okay, now it's time to fill up with fresh water. So I've got some water that's up to the right temperature, about 24 degrees Celsius, and it's been dechlorinated as well. So using my trusty red colander, which I'm sure you've all seen by now, put that across the span of the tank, like so, and then we can pour our fresh water in quite quickly. Okay guys, that's the maintenance complete. Uh, very happy with the results as you can see it's looking pretty good water's a little bit cloudy right now because of just from the water change livestock super happy plants are actually purling purling means the plants are actually physically visibly producing oxygen bubbles it's a really cool process it means if you didn't know already plants photosynthesize they produce oxygen when the water is saturated with oxygen um, and the plants produce extra oxygen uh, it, they produce bubbles basically and that's what's happening right now you only normally get it when you inject co2 and have high lighting levels the reason we've got it in here without co2 injection is because when we did the water change um, a lot of the plants were exposed to the air and they used the opportunity to grab carbon dioxide co2 from the air and then they really photosynthesize like crazy they've got all that extra light because there's no water in there they've got all that extra co2 so when we fill up with water again the plants are purling and I think it looks beautiful. So before I go into the B-roll sequence, uh, I just want to thank you all for watching. Uh, I know a few of you have requested an update on the budget scape, so hopefully you're happy with it. Um, I've really enjoyed making the video. I love promoting aquascaping to you guys. And if you've got any comments for me, what you love about the aquascape, what you don't like about the aquascape, or if you've got any other ideas for videos, let me know in the comments below. Keep on scaping. Take care. Cheerio.